मेरेजेट फाउंडेशन आज थे के दो बच्चों और पूर्वे हमारे दर्कु मिल जाते चाटी एवं दो हजार नौ शने तेजस्वी राइंगराजी अगर उठी जो तो एक बिहिन भी बहो व्यवस्था करें छे बहो माँ बाबा तादर में के भी बहो दिते पार्टी से नाप्ती को शुभ दर कारणे ये अशोहाय पिता माता आर्तनात के किंग बतार अशोहाय मेर जीवन के छोटी क्रस्ता रखार जन्नो यूनिटी वेलफेयर फाउंडेशनर जे प्रकोपो जे मेरेजेट फाउंडेशन छोटी एक टीम बहुत उद्देश uh, we've also helped people get married, live a life after marriage. Uh, it, it is sometimes an issue. Um, we, uh, we believe that marriage is very important in certain communities um, because people um, see the family as a strong foundation for the basis of a strong community. And uh, it is also a basic need. And no matter what religion you are, marriage seems to be the uh, main solution that is used for uh, a family to be together, and no matter where, where where you go in the world, this is the, this is the case. Um, so we, we, one of our projects was focusing on this area. We do not stop there. After the marriage is conducted, we will ensure that one of our local members is present at the marriage um, gathering, and all information is taken down so that we can follow up. We can follow up to see whether the marriage is lasting, whether there are any marital problems, whether uh, the lady has been abused or not. Many poor families find the prospect of marriage for their daughters an intimidating one. Customs, rituals, financial demands and the pressure to conform to societal norms make the otherwise simple task of arranging a life partner a daunting proposition. The added requirement of lavishing the daughter with a dowry places an insurmountable pressure on parents. Many unmarried females are left open to exploitation and abuse from unwelcome eyes and powerful locals. It is a requirement of all marriages conducted under the auspices of UWF that there will be no dowry, the financial incentive provided by the bride's family to bridegroom. The consequence of this unfortunate practice has led many females to be disfigured by acid and in extreme cases, murder. The custom of paying a dowry to the future husband's family when a daughter is married is illegal in Bangladesh but is still practiced by most families living in rural areas. Payment is normally upwards from 20,000 taka, around 190 pounds, and since typical earnings are only 100 taka, 94 pence per day, this can be a major contributor to poverty for many families with daughters. Research carried out by Bath University in the UK states that those households with lower levels of education, that owned less land, had fewer assets and had many young children and elderly relatives, faced the most difficulty in escaping poverty. Unity Welfare Foundation, under the project name Marriage Aid Foundation, identified these problems and decided to tackle problems by removing the artificial constraints of marriage and supporting families in their efforts to get their females married to suitable spouses who promise to protect and save safeguard the dignity and integrity of the girl. To ensure sustainable economic living, a rickshaw, cow and a sewing machine is provided to the male on behalf of the female. The items are actually the property of the female and the male has to look after it. This helps to empower the women as it is their Islamic and cultural right in the context of Bangladesh. The aim is to enable the couple to earn a livelihood and avoid becoming recipients of aid. It is hoped that the same couple will in the future become providers. UWF maintains a system of monitoring the couple after the wedding ceremony to ensure that they are working productively and whether they require further assistance. We, we have our meat but we buy it from a butcher's shop. We don't see how, how it's slaughtered. We don't see, for example, like a poor family who may have raised a, a cow from a calf onwards and how this is thing has become part of a family, they provide a thing and then they have to sacrifice it for their meat. Um, there is a bond built. We don't see that, we don't feel that difference. We just go to the chicken and chip shop and buy, buy a burger and that meat comes. There have been surveys made to people who have been asked, you know, where does your meat come from? What is this meat that you're eating? They don't even know, they cannot identify it with the animal that it came from. So yes, we, we all need to make a, a concerted effort to make people aware where uh, and our, our things come from, uh, how, what an effect, uh, what an impact this has 
on the rest of the world and people around us. Kobani is an act of devotion which involves an animal being sacrificed. Millions of Muslims complete this important duty and distribute the meat to needy people. UWF, like many Muslim charities, has been performing the Kobani on behalf of many UK Muslims for a number of years. Men, women and children start gathering as soon as the Eid prayers conclude, waiting to collect meat. For many, this will be the only chance of eating meat in the year. Such is the clamour to get their hands on the meat at times, it appears that UWF volunteers will be overwhelmed. Through careful screening done previously, UWF ensures that everyone who comes, especially women and children, receive a 2.5 kilogram pack of meat. A total of 14 cows and 6 goats were sacrificed, benefiting more than 700 families. In 2007, the Kubani program was done in Salet. UWF, through its overseas partners, ensures that people's religious obligation is fulfilled correctly and that deserving individuals receive the meat. The satisfaction and smiles on the faces of people is very uplifting and a cause for rejoicing. It is the moral duty of the well-off to provide help to the not-so-well-off. We can all make a difference. We've used Bangladesh as our pilot ground. Uh, our intention is to expand and go wherever the need is. I mean, some places like Somalia, Sudan, you name it, uh, wherever there is a need, we'd like to expand to. But initially, our focus has been on Bangladesh because that is uh, an area that we have a, a connection with, and we have also people who are willing to help us. We're working with uh, who, who are um, who we are who we, who we believe are trustworthy. Um, and reliable. 2007 saw a number of floods affecting different parts of Bangladesh. In one such episode, UWF commissioned a local partner in Sunamganj to visit flood-stricken people and to hand out cash. Eight families were identified in the trip to receive aid to construct eight tin shelters. After the completion of the shelters, UWF reps visited the beneficiaries and conducted interviews. Village elders and locals attended a ceremony to distribute aid to flood victims. UWF spent a total of £2,200 in the construction of shelters and the distribution of relief. People generously donated zakah and voluntary sadaqah. Working with other UK-based organisations, aid was distributed to Silet when another flood struck the region. A total of £5,000 was spent in the distribution of relief, with UWF providing around £2,000. Although not one of its immediate aims, UWF will work with other aid organisations when major emergencies arise. It, oh, another thing to add is that um, the funds that we've raised so far um, have been meagre, they've been small, but uh, we've been very fortunate, we've been able to do very much with it. We've utilised every little bit of it as much as we can uh, to provide uh, the people uh, to meet people's needs um, and, and I, every penny that we raise goes straight straight to them Again, may God's peace and mercy upon you descend. We will meet at the gathering of innocence at Alcothar, the fount of abundance. By the prophet's hand, may our thirst be quenched. We will be with him and we will be content.
Jesus. Yeah.